How did your original music clip come about? The video clip for Accidentally Kelly Street was um, produced by Robbie Douglas Turner, I believe, and it was our second video ever. Um, and our first one was for Ordinary Angels, which I think, you know, by the by the fluke of having never done one before, it came together quite beautifully. And um, then when we got to Accidentally Kelly Street, I guess that's when you kind of actually have to produce something and we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> and um, it, I think that it quite it showed in in that <laughs> video clip. So yeah, I think concept wise, it was it was a lot looser. And I think as far as a band we um, performing, we had no idea how to do video clips. Now you, you've watched the Late Show clip itself. Are you uh, a fan of the Degeneration Late Show Working Dog people? Yes, I was. Yes, and am. <laughs> Did you watch this when it originally went to air back in nineteen ninety two? I'm not sure if I saw the, the the moment. I'm not sure if I was watching the show the moment that, that it went on air, but I obviously would have become aware of it quite quickly <laughs> <laughs> after it after it aired. I, I may have been watching it that night. I do remember my heart sinking <laughs> by the time I, I did see it. <laughs> <laughs> well, were you and the band uh, flattered at all by it, or did you uh, were you a bit unsure about it? I don't know how everyone in the band felt about it. I, I was a lot younger than everyone else, and I was struggling pretty hard with our image at that time because we already at Kelly Street was being thrashed on the radio, and um, we were. I think right around that time, there was a title in in a an article in a music mag somewhere that um, labelled us as the most annoying band in Australia. Oh. And being <laughs> in my late teens, early twenties at that time, it was pretty hard to take. So um, I personally w- was quite upset by the video when it came out. I-, I think probably some other members of the band may have been, and I also think some members would have found it quite entertaining, depending on their age. Being lampooned by that national comedy show, did it feel like that it helped reach your celebrity status even higher or did everything become the same when that all happened? Uh, it was all like quite out of control at that stage. Like we had, it, The whole thing had skyrocketed and, and so I can't tell, you know, what was what. It, it was, to me, quite, it was moving very fast and this was one of the things that happened during that time. I can see now that it was a great compliment and, and that it's awesome. Uh, but at the time, it, it just made me want to run and hide. Now, I sent you the clip of the DVD commentary of Mick. Um, yeah. <laughs> would you know if that was true at all about a certain band member's relationship falling apart due to that sketch? Um, I'll have to go and ask members of the band if that, uh, you know, had, had not come to my attention. So I'm trying to think of who that would be and who, who the partner would be, but um, not that I know of. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Or not that they were aware of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you've done your live performances, have people in the audience mentioned anything like that, like uh, saying accidentally was released, just uh, highlighting the fact that they're aware of that lampooning? Uh, people do say that they loved it and did I love it and, you know, that they they, they parallel them often because you know, I think, you know, fans of, of our band were fans of the show as well. How do you feel overall with this pop culture status that you have with this generation? How do you feel about the reaction today? It's, it's amazing that it's reached so many people and, and to go through the filter of them being parodied or lampooned and, and, and twice, you know, like dub, double filter, it is, I guess that really embeds it into pop culture. So that's that's a pretty amazing status to reach <laughs> if only you know in, in cult status it's it's a pretty big deal 
Um, and, and there's part of me that still cringes. <laughs> yeah. Everyone cringes at their own past. You hit the nail on the head. It's a, it's an awkward time to be in your early 20s, so, you know, <laughs> what can you do? Yeah. I'm on Angie Hart Music on mo- most of the platforms. That's how you'll find me, H-A-R-T-S Music. Thank you for being a great sport about this too. <laughs> Thank you.